Hydrogen cars are the future, and BMW and Toyota are teaming up to give us a mind-blowing product. But you'll need to wait a while, and by that we mean till 2025. Everyone's making speculations, but you don't need to, because we're here to answer all your questions. Keep watching this video to see how this vehicle will change the world. So let's get into the deets. First of all, why is hydrogen fuel the best alternative? It looks like hydrogen is the answer to our energy needs. Why? With the global energy crisis and shortage of fuel, an alternative is required. Even simple electric cars are not the best option. Hydrogen-powered cars are suitable for the environment as they don't emit greenhouse gases. And if you've taken a science class or two, you should know that these gases cause pollution. Besides, these cars can be refueled in three to four minutes and travel longer distances. The first hydrogen-powered cars hit the market in 2015, promising a healthier planet. But are you wondering why you've seen such a few on the road? Well, you're not alone. There are fewer than 7,000 in the United States alone. The question here is that if hydrogen is safe and energy efficient, why aren't we using it that much? The answer is that it's not readily available, but the two automobile giants seem to have it all figured out, or not. So how will this collaboration work? According to a report by Nikkei Asia, BMW and Toyota will be producing a hydrogen car. Peter Noda said that both the companies would be joining on a joint venture. Both have worked together before as they developed the iX5, making BMW's X5 SUV and Toyota Supra hydrogen-based in 2019. Toyota has excellent experience with fuel cell technology with its 8-year-old Mirai midsize sedan heading into its second generation. Oliver Zips said that BMW's next-generation platform, Neo Class A, will likely be designed to accommodate the gaseous fuel in addition to battery power. The company has pursued the same all-of-the-above approach before with a platform known as CLAR. This supported internal combustion and full-battery electric propulsion. This allowed BMW to move quickly to plug-in hybrids. But its current EVs have been delayed compared to its competitors. It's possible that new Eclos may fall prey to similar problems, or maybe it will solve them. Now, the market will decide starting in 2025 when new 3 Series sedans, X3 SUVs, will be available for sale based on the platform. And let's talk about these fuel cars and some other details. Test subjects and small-scale production of iX5 are set to kick off by the end of 2022, and production will expand fully by the middle of the decade. But the infrastructure is still the most significant hurdle with these types of vehicles. With all the benefits of hydrogen, it's pointless if there is no natural way of refueling it. Even Hyundai has found a problem in New Zealand, with its Nexo hydrogen car technically available to buy now. But the issue is that hydrogen stations are some time away. But shouldn't we be switching to EVs? We know it may seem odd to continue working on such vehicles when electric cars are much more popular, but Noda pointed out several defenses for the technology. EVs take much more time to recharge, for instance. Also, BMW didn't want to pour all its investments into one technology. Needless to say, the company might soon ramp up EV development. Why? Because pure electric cars have represented a larger slice of sales than previously expected. Plus, the company could reach its 50% sales target one or two years earlier. So what do consumers have to say about this venture overall? It looks like consumers are not on board with this new idea. Well, they may have pretty good reasons to form such an opinion. According to some, this is a fail because hydrogen has to be green generated for it to be environmentally friendly. Both companies have a history of being heavily influenced by carbon-based fuels. Plus, if they were serious about the environment, they would have released a pure electric i8. Consumers claim that it would have been more efficient in all ways. One user also said that Toyota should not be chasing this venture at the moment. They suggested that instead of this, the company should look around at the global investment of billions of dollars in battery plants, which are currently under construction. Plus, there's no scale of the economy when you choose a totally different path, and this will eventually be a low-budget car that people will abandon. On the other hand, some customers don't agree with this point of view at all. Toyota has been energy efficient for many years now. For those who don't know, the company released the Prius 25 years ago. These hybrid cars have been successful for millions of units, and there have hardly been any complaints. Now, on to other news. Firstly, Elon Musk says Tesla has made over 3 million cars. CEO Elon Musk tweeted that Tesla has made over 3 million cars. He said that, out of that total, Tesla's Shanghai factory had made 1 million cars. This announcement comes after months of lockdowns and shortages of parts in China. How is this relevant? Well, this threatened Tesla's vehicle production significantly, and now this this statement suggests that the Shanghai factory is producing many new vehicles. Also, it just opened back in 2019 after years of a hefty investment. This achievement follows after the company's reported deliveries, with approximate sales rising in recent quarters. If we talk about July, Tesla said it delivered 254,695 vehicles in the second quarter. This was a 26.5% rise year over year. But if we look at it from another angle, this shows how small Musk's company is compared to other automotive giants. Toyota delivered over 10 million vehicles last year year 
alone, Tesla's stock is nearly down by 25% this year as investors have been reassessing fast-growing companies in the face of inflation. Given all this, Musk said he wanted to get the Shanghai plant back in the saddle. Plus, he mentioned that the Berlin and Austin factories were losing billions because of supply chain and production issues. Next, Hyundai has a new way to prevent its cars from getting stolen. Some TikTok videos show how easy it is to start some Hyundai and Kia models without a key. You can start the cars by just using the tip of a USB cable. Besides, underage children are doing this, taking the cars for joyrides. One such incident involved a group of four children aged 14 to 17. They stole a Kia Forte from a rental lot in Minnesota, leading the police on a highway chase. The car crashed as the driver attempted to avoid a stop stick. What more? After this, they tried to flee, but the police quickly caught them. But it looks like Hyundai has a new plan to prevent these thefts from targeting its vehicles. Before getting into this, what's exactly causing this issue? Removing the steering wheel column gives thieves access to the ignition bypass. The problem stems from the lack of an immobilizer system in some cars before the 2022 model year. These include the 2011 through 2012 vehicles that are equipped with ignitions. Plus, the ones that require mechanical keys are also facing the same issue. A spokesperson says that the automaker has expanded a program supporting the police department. They're distributing theft-preventative steering wheel locks and have also identified a product that addresses the issue. Also, Hyundai will be offering a security system for the affected models in showrooms from the 1st of October. Besides, customers can always call the assistance line if they have more concerns. A Kia representative also said that they are working on a similar plan and will announce these details soon. Finally, Europe's car industry could be headed for a crash. The price surge is starting to weigh on car demand, and this is hurting Europe's auto industry. Volkswagen expects earnings to decline this year because of high interest rates and inflation. Customers are debating whether to buy a vehicle or not. Plus, there is always an option to push the leasing contract ahead, so why bother? Reports from BMW last week also showed that new vehicle orders are retreating, particularly in Europe. The situation is getting out of control. Germany's economy stagnated in the second quarter amid price gains, supply shortages, and the threat of energy rationing. This energy crisis is due to Russia limiting gas supplies to Europe. The ongoing heat wave is disrupting waterways that are needed to ship coal to power plants and factories. Germany will prioritize gas deliveries to private homes over factories if there is a more crucial shortage. While European vehicle sales have slumped for the past year, other brands are taking a different approach. Mercedes-Benz and BMW have seen profit rise because they focus their production on high-margin models, and manufacturers like Stellantis remain hopeful that they can sustain strong earnings in the year's second half. Still, it's increasingly unclear how automobile giants can outrun the economy's underlying issues for much longer. The region is already bracing for a bleak winter because of the worsening energy crisis. We can only hope the situation gets closer to normal soon. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on BMW and Toyota teaming up to create something new in 2025? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.